Hey, friends, thanks for tuning in. We're excited to be here. I'm glad you guys are able to tune in. Please share the message. And this is a little something for everybody today. So let me hear you say amen. amen. All right. So I want to start out by saying I'm going to hit on today. I'm just going to jump right on in. Three areas of our life that we deal with. Fear, faith, and forgiveness. Now, does anybody deal with any of those? Let me see you raise your hand. Then we got something for everybody. This is the right message, right? I love that. So we're going to jump on in, and, and God has just been unpacking some mighty things through our Bible study on Tuesday nights, and just individual uh, personal time with the Lord, just showing some stuff. And I, you know, I, I worked on this through the Bible study. I worked on it last night and different things. And I was going over. See, this is what this looks like. Nobody else would know what this looks like with me. You know, it's like hieroglyphics. And I was up here. We had prayed over the message today, and I read through it again. I go, "Whoo! I didn't see that either." Thank you, Lord, man. So you know, the message is not done. Until we say amen here, and then really it's not done. It's just handed off so we can run with it. So I just love that about God's word. Even though we might use some familiar passages and some familiar stories, God continues to, to just wring more and more grace and wisdom out as we dig into his word. So we're going to dig into the word of God today. If you've got your Bibles, uh, you can open up to Acts chapter 16. And I've got to kind of do a little unpacking to get us where we want to go. But I'll tell you, it's going to be worth the ride, all right? So if you guys are ready, I'm going to kind of just run through a few things here and share a, a, a couple of odds and ends that the Lord's been showing on me. So me this last, last week and, and even right up till we started today. So here we go. We're starting out sharing this story. And this is about Paul and Silas going into uh, uh, through a lot of the Roman culture and everything else. And they're going to Philippi. And as they get in there, they start seeing a few things happening there. And I want to just read a few things. I'm really starting in about uh, verse 16. And I don't have it up here, but I'm just going to kind of move through that. And then we'll get into the meat of it. So here we go. Paul and Silas are going. It says, once we're going into a place of prayer, and they were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which uh, she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by uh, telling fortunes and stuff. And she kept going around, and she was shouting out uh, to Paul and the rest of them. He says, these men are the servants of the Most High God, and telling everybody the way to be saved. Now, you would think that'd be a good thing, right? But listen here. So she kept us up for days and days and days, and then finally Paul got so annoyed, he turned around and said, man, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And at that moment, that evil spirit came out of that, that girl. Now, in our Bible study, I never really looked at this. The, what we were seeing in, in a lot of things that we studied in depth over the last couple of Tuesdays is they say that that, that lady, I always thought it was a lady, they said the, lady, the girl was probably about 10 to 12 years old. Isn't that something that we can get into a lot of that other stuff there? But, man, I tell you what, the devil will try to grab your children early on. But let me tell you, God's good. He can break the shackle. Amen. So he speaks the mighty name of Jesus, right? Now, this is what the Lord showed me today. Let me go back here. It says, once they were going to a place of prayer. And I told Tanya today, I said, isn't that something? Every time these guys were going to, to church, something was coming up. Every time something they were going there, guess what? The last couple of weeks, we were in Acts chapter 3. They were going to the gates beautiful and seeing what's going on there. And all of a sudden, you know, they're turning around and they, they, they see a, a guy that's, that's been there for 40 years. And they, what, what do they do? They use the name of Jesus on him. Right? Set them free. So here they're going again, and now they turn around and they see what's going on here. And here's a girl that is possessed by a demonic spirit, and they're using the girl for gain. Right? Now let's keep on going. So what do they do? They turn around and say, hey, in the mighty name of Jesus, he's set her free. Now you would think most people would be excited about that. Well, guess what? They were making a buck off the girl's back, so they weren't excited about it because they said, guess what? That's, now she's damaged goods. This is, how, this is how the world thinks, okay? So you turn around, and they start looking, and they go, go in, and they say, look, you broke our, our money-making machine, basically. See, they didn't even view her as a person. This was a way to make money, okay? See, that's the world will look at the ways to make money. There's nothing wrong with making money. I just say, let's do it godly, amen, and use it for the things of the kingdom of God. There's nothing wrong with that. But this right here, there's something wrong with this. Okay, but guess what? When the mighty name of Jesus shows up speaking with power and faith, boom, the shackles are broke and the girl's set free. So you would think, okay, let's go on about it. So what else happens? They keep on rolling. So when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrate and said, these men are Jews and they're throwing our city into an uproar. How many knows when you, when you start pre preaching about Jesus, it can throw a few things into uproar in the world. But I'm going to tell you what, guess what? Got to get it all straight. Got to work it on out. So look at this. So they brought them before the, the magistrate. And next thing you know, they're saying, look, man, these guys are, 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 are causing a big ruckus. Now, Paul 
was a, was a Roman citizen. And for a Roman citizen, all you had to do was say, I'm a Roman citizen, you've got to give me a trial. But he did not say in this particular case that he was. Now we're going to get back to that in just a little bit. Let's hold on to that under, under your hat and keep on going. So he lets it work its own way on out. They turn around and they flog them. They beat them. Look, man, you cost this guy some money. What do you think you're doing? You're putting our town in an uprise. All the townspeople, man, boom, 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 boom. Sometimes all the world will turn on you when you're doing what's right. Amen? But it's all for God's glory if we keep holding and pressing to the mark. So let's keep on rolling down here. So they turn around and they stripped them down. They beat them with rods. And it says severely flogged them. Then threw them into the, to the, to the prison and put a jailer with them right there. And keep moving on. And I thought this was neat today. And then they put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to stocks. Inner cell. That might not be nothing to this, but I always pray. I said, Lord, you just didn't put that word in there for some reason. They didn't put them over to the side. They didn't put them over here to the west wing over here. They put them in the inner parts. Jesus was in the middle of the crosses. I believe that maybe, now this is just me thinking here this morning as God's unpacking this, maybe put him right in the center so everybody had an opportunity to hear what's going on. Amen? Right dead center. Sometimes God will put you in the center of the situation so that he'll be glorified. Amen? I want you to hear that today. So right now, if you say, I think I'm in the center, let me hear you say amen. I'm in the middle of this storm. I'm in the middle of this situation. Well, guess what? How you respond and how you allow God to use you and Holy Spirit work with you will echo to all those around you and bring glory to God when we're faithful to stick into stuff. So look at this. They turn around and put them in the stocks now. Now when I think about stocks, you know what I think about? I think about Bush Gardens. I'm just being honest with you. You know, you go take the kids, you put your hands up there and you smile. That was not the stocks that they were getting in. And it's not stocks and bonds like I lose money on. It was stocks that, that were wooden and they put them out like this. And what we found out through our study, that they would put their feet and their arms out so far, it was right to the edge where their joints were getting ready to come dislocated. Just want to give you a little background. It wasn't like the jail system we see now. Amen? Let me tell you, beaten with rods, stripped down, humiliated, and all he had to do was say, you can't do that. I'm a Roman citizen. But... Why did he choose to hold tight? I think we're going to see it as we work through this. So we turn around, and then what happens? They start doing something that's just crazy, and I want to start reading that again. But look at this. Put the shackles on, stretching them out, everything else, right in the middle of jail, and then we see God do a mighty move. Now, this is the scripture we're going to get to, but i got to get you there. Amen? So that's the takeaway right there. Then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Well, guess what? There's a few things that we got to get to before we get to that, all right? Everybody doing good? Say amen. amen. So i got to read a little bit more. Just wanted to give you a little background, and we're going to walk through this, and then we're going to do a teaching and a preaching, all right? So in verse 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake that... Uh, the foundations that the foundation of the prison were shaken at once all the prison door flew open and everyone's chains came loose the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison's doors open he drew a sword and was about to kill himself because he thought that the prisoners had escaped but Paul shouted don't harm yourself we are all here the jailer calls for the lights rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas he then brought them out and asked sirs what must I do to be saved and they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all the household were baptized. Then the jailer brought them into the house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his household, his whole household. Then it was daylight. The magistrate sent the officers to the jailer with an order. Release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrate has ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave and go in peace. Now that's a lot to take in. We're going to break that out. And I think you guys are going to really gain some really cool things here. So about midnight, they were having a praise and worship service. Their bodies are beaten and disjointed. We get upset if the seats are too hard. You see what I'm saying? So, oh my gosh, I can't. Man, is buddy going to keep singing Right? <laughs> they got their bodies beaten, stripped down. I want to tell you what, when I look around, this is for me only, okay? I'm a wimp when it comes to all this worship based on the Old Testament saints. Right? I was like, man, these men and women were really 
all in. Lord, help us to be sold out for you. So think about that. Come on down here. Earthquake, a mighty act of God. They were saying this. Just, when something like that happens, and even when we say it now, but that was a mighty move of God. They knew something was going on. Something was happening. You know, just a few weeks ago, we talked about an earthquake, and, and the stone was rolled away. God is on the scene. So they're saying, man, what's going on here? And they start rolling back and looking at a few things. Look at this. So here we go. Breaking the chains, man. Faith in action. Now we come down to about 27. The jailer knew if they escaped, the authorities would kill him. Now here's something I didn't know. I didn't know this until we started digging in our Bible study. Back in those days, even if it was wartime or whatever, if you were being captured by your enemies or something like this came down. See, I thought, well, he just said, man, I'm just going to kill myself because it's a bad day. No, you know what? In the, that time of history, if a person would, would die, what they caught, thought was honorable, they would allow their family to keep all their possessions. That's pretty heavy duty. See, here, we're thinking, when we ask the man, that guy's a wimp, he should have sucked it up, right? It's easy to say when we hadn't been beaten and everything else, right? But see, maybe he was thinking of somebody else. Maybe he's thinking, you know what? They're going to kill me anyway, and my family's going to lose everything. But I'm going to lay my life down so they can gain. Who did that? Huh? Did Jesus do that for us? Laid his life down? It's amazing when we start unpacking the depth of the scriptures, how God starts showing us all this running together. So even that back then, that was, God was working in the midst of that. We roll on down here. Turn around. 28. The jailer is amazed, runs to them, trembling in fear, and he asks, what must I do? See, now the shoe's on the other foot. I can just imagine, y'all get in there. Who you think you are? Tighten them shackles up a little bit more. Guess what? Have we ever been prideful like that? And then when the shoe's on the other foot, we go, oh my goodness. See, I had a guy I worked with a long time ago, and he, did, he said this. He said, it's never a problem until the problem is on your front porch. I said, amen. You ever heard that? See, somebody else will have a problem. They say, well, all you got to do is this. Don't worry about it. You just, you know, just fix it. You should have done that. They could give you all this woulda, shoulda stuff. So, you know, and then they're walking. And then guess what? Something happens in their marriage. Something happens in their 401k. Something happens with their children. And guess what? There's fear and trembling. So what, I, I, what I've tried to do is walk humbly through those things and say, man, I'm so sorry you're going through that. Let's go to the Lord and see what his promises are about that. Let's encourage them along the side. Most of the time, when you're down, you don't need somebody to step on you. You need an uplifting thing, right? You know, I, I think about this. When you look at the life of Jesus, it was always... It was always Law to the proud, grace to the humble. You'll see that. Let's keep on rolling now. Take a look at this. So now they come down, and now his heart is ready to hear the message. Sometimes you've got to go through some of those humbling things to get your heart ears open, right? Shares the message with him. And the jailer, look at this. Now, look, this is such a contrast what's going on. This is what happens when the gospel is preached, man. Lives are changed. Things are transformed in our life. So this guy, here he is. He's the jailer. He knows how strict it's going to be if these guys break away. And now what does he do? After he hears the word of God, something changed in his heart. Look at this. It, it, it produced grace. It produced faith. Look at this. And the jailer brings them into his home. Come on now. Can you imagine that when the, when the, when the uppity ups hear that and the magistrate, you, you did what? You took the prisoners out and you took them to your house? Oh, not only that, I fixed them a meal. Not only that, I washed their wounds. Something changed in that man's life. Do you have that life-changing result when you heard the gospel? Do you, or when you continue to hear the gospel? Do you have that life-changing situation going in where you want to do and you want to give and you want to be the mirror of Christ to other people? Even those folks, right? Even those folks that have wounded you. Woo! Gets a little tough there now, don't it? See, we don't mind helping your sister. You don't mind helping your brother, your grandma. But what about the guy at work that's just been badgering you? What about the guy that stole your wallet? What, whatever the case. God still wants us to have his love flow through us and bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now that's grace, man. That's something else. I say this many times, probably every time I think about grace. I always say this. Why is it when we get our hand caught in the cookie jar, we want grace? But if it's our cookie jar and somebody else's hand in there, we want their whole arm. Isn't that amazing? That's a little buck row theology, but it's true. You know, you sit there and say, well, oh, man, this, 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 this. Man, wouldn't you be able to teach them and say, hey, look, you know what? I don't appreciate that. That don't mean we roll over with that. But you know what? I'm going to show you grace 
in this situation. I believe God gives us opportunities to show grace all the time. And I also believe this. God doesn't call us to be a, uh, a doorstop, a floor mat, or walked on or kicked on. As Christians, we stand our ground. But also, when there's time to uh, share love and grace, God wants us to do that. So he comes on back here. And now I, I, I'm going to get to this end here. I'm going to hold up on 35 and 36 for the big finish. Is that all right? We'll come back to that. But look at this. This is what I started seeing last night. I said, see, when God comes on the scene, your gains become greater than your fear. What did we just see? He falls down trembling. What must I do to be saved? They preach the word of God. He receives it. His family receives it. Guess what? He could have went on and said, okay, get back in your, in your cell. But man, what does love do? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Love gives, man. It just does. It's just, it's just an attribute when you love somebody, you just seem to give. And many of y'all know I got a grandbaby on the way. I already love the grandbaby. Grandbaby ain't done nothing for me. Don't know anything about this other than God's blessings with a grandbaby. Guess what? I love that baby already. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's just, that's love. That's grace. I always tell him, I say, I don't care, boy or girl, just tell me what color guitar to buy because Pops is going to do it. Papa is ready. I'm ready. It's exciting, man. But see, I've already purposed in my heart, I'm going to love that baby. I'm going to love that baby. See, God loves you. Well, what happens if that baby's a little stink pot? Well, I'll send it back home, but I'm still going to love that baby. Right? <laughs> I was like, you need to come get this grandbaby. Right? But you know, I, I've, had, I've had this words of wisdom from every grandparent I met. Jerry was sharing about it today. He says, buddy, he said, when that baby's born, Remember this conversation? He said, I want you to come talk to me six months later. <laughs> You're going to lose your mind. You're going to love that baby. Isn't that something? And I love my big babies, right? But the reason I'm talking about that, that's how God loves you. He loves you. Why else would he go through what he did to get you back? That's what I want you to see. And when we receive that, that's what happens to us. Look what happened to the jailer. He was feared, and then he got faith, and boom! Boom! He wanted everybody. He went to his house. He went everywhere for them to know the one true God. Somebody say amen. But you know what? I want to kind of touch on something we all deal with. Anybody ever, ever fear from time to time? Just a little bit. Well, it's, it's just a natural reaction. I said, think about this. Sometime or another, we've all experienced fear. And I want you to think about this for a second. And I was talking to Connie. I said, this message is for us today. I said, how does your body react when you're in fear? Now, for me, I tell them all the time. Don't touch me when I'm sleeping. I love you, but I punch you. I just, I do. I just, I don't know where. I just, don't touch me. It's just weird. It's a leftover karate move or something. I'm like, Whip! and Denise is all the time. Why do you jump like that? I'm from Buck Row. You, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Somebody coming. I thought it's coming on my blind side. Me and my sister went to eat the other day. She said, you all right, bro? I said, yeah. She said, you never sit with your back to the wall. I said, yeah, somebody had my seat. She said, well, sit over here with me. Okay, <laughs> just what you do, you know, you get used to that. So look at this, there's fear sometimes. Now everybody responds different to fear. I'm going to give you an example of my beautiful bride. I should have asked, but she'll have to love me through it. Now when my wife gets scared, right, usually when I'm driving. <laughs> I thought y'all liked that, that's what me and Connie was talking about. Right, when we're driving, we get this. Every bit of air gets sucked out of the cabin. Didn't you see that? I said, yeah. She said, well, why didn't you hit your brake? I said, we had like two car lengths. Two car lengths. I mean, whoo. And, all of a sudden, and if it's something real bad, you get the moment of silence before the high-pitched squeal. It goes, oh! Ah! I'm like, oh, it was a man, this is not good. You know? But everybody responds different to fear. And the reason I say that, what does it do? It just grabs your body and shackles it, man. It's, your body just, oh, what's going on? Man, I'm going to tell you what. Do we have that fear or that reverence of, of hell? See, because that's not going to stop. They're not going to put a Band-Aid on you. It's not going to stop in a week or a month or 10 years. And it's, it's going to be forever. So it's, it's okay to have a healthy fear of things if it produces faith in the right things. You hear what I'm saying there? So let's keep on going. Y'all got any uh, illustrations y'all like to share about your, your stuff? Good. That's good, good, good. I don't want to do no marriage uh, counseling. I got enough on my own. Here we go. <laughs> so look at this. What's happening here? Fear was on both sides of the table. Let me kick this thing in here. Come on around. Fear was on both sides of the table. Surely there was fear with Paul and Silas. Then the jailer experienced fear also. Can you imagine that? 
The tables turn, like we said early on. The tables are moving around. Man, things can change in an instant, can't they? Things can change in an instant. Look, Paul and, Paul and Silas went from a little mission trip to a beaten in jail to the middle of an earthquake. And that's something else. That makes for a long day. And then you turn around and see what else happens. God brings it out to the other side. What else do we see about fear? Fear is a robber. It'll take your peace. It'll take your joy. It's a, it's a mess. There's nothing good that's going to come out of fear. Now, look. Let me, let me go on back to what I said. Fear doesn't have to be a bad thing if it brings you to the right answer in faith, okay? I think we need to have a healthy understanding. I'm not saying jump out in front of a car or try to fly with, you know, off the roof. But, you know, let's, let's be sensible about this whole thing. But fear is a robber of your joy. I was talking to somebody the other day. And I really hope that I live for a long time, you know, to get all the stuff that God's called me to do. I'd like to finish big. How about you? But we never know. But I've come to the realization and understand this at 53 years old that I've lived longer than I will live. Right. So guess what? We on the tipping point on that mountain. Right. But that's OK, because you know what it does? It just cranks up my urgency that much more. I had a guy say, man, you stay busy. I said, man, I got stuff to do. I got to get things. The other man, I want to make sure that I'm being used for the Lord because I don't want to get there and go. Yeah, I forgot about that piece. Yeah, I forgot about that. Don't you want to finish big for the Lord? Don't let fear rob you and what else shackle you to the past. I want to talk about that a little bit. Fear will shackle you to the past. How many people have ever failed at something? Well, I'm going to pray for the three that didn't raise their hand. No, I'm just teasing. That's right. We've all missed the mark and we've all set out to do something and it just didn't turn out like we thought. Do you allow that to shackle you to the past? No, I couldn't try that again. You know, people, and I'm just talking in a worldly sense here, people that, that, that made money and people that that's, uh, came up with different things and, and created different things, even for medicine and stuff, they, they've missed the mark many a time and they just kept going. What's the old saying? One of the guys, I think whoever did it was Edison. Did I get it right this time, Thomas Edison? Did he do the light bulb? Because sometimes I end up having the wrong name there. But I think he, he said, man, they said, look, look, man, you, you've blown this so many times. He said, no, I just found like a hundred other ways not to make a light bulb. You know, as we turn around with that. So what is it that, that's trying to shackle you from God's best? Let it go. Learn from those things and then move on. I want to encourage you. I'm speaking to somebody today because we turn around and we just go, man, I can't do that because, you know, I just, I'm too old. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not in that shape. I can't do that. I don't have enough. I don't have this because I, and, and you just, I, 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 and it should be, he is able. Amen. That's what I want you to see here today. If God could take guys. Going to a church service with a beating on their back in stocks in the middle of night and they got a heart praising God that brings the walls down and people's life are transformed. Don't you think he could work in your life? Is God the same yesterday and today and forever? Absolutely. So let me tell you, why do we start selling God short? Man, trust him with the big stuff. Trust him with the small stuff. See, a lot of times I think we go, well, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to pray, pray about this. It's just a small thing. When your kids come home from school, don't you like to know what's going on in school? Hey, how was school? And once they get about 14 or 15, it's just another day. You've got to almost beg them to find out what's going on, right? But when they're little, they share that childlike faith. Oh, little Johnny was doing this, and Susie did this, and I spilled my milk, and, and Johnny blew uh, milk bubbles out his nose, and you get the scoop, man. You know, you want to know what's going on because you love them. Well, you know what? God wants us to speak to him, too. It's a relationship all the time. So don't let your, your fear shackle you to the past, but let God work it all out. Look at this. John 14, 1. I use this all the time in my daily walk. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus is saying, you know what? I am trustworthy. Sometimes when my world gets all tipsy-turvy, I have to go back to the basics. How about y'all? This is coming up, and that's going on, and how am I going to do this? And man, I just start going like this. And all of a sudden, I just I said, wait a minute. Jesus Christ died for my sin. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, sits on the right-hand side of God, interceding on our behalf. He is able to hold my salvation for all eternity. I think he's trustworthy. Now... I'm walking from that platform. Now I'm walking in faith instead of fear. Amen. Let's keep on rolling. Tell them to come on down. We got it. Woo-hoo. 
So we go from fear to faith. Look at this. Here we go. Paul and Silas had the faith in the Lord that he would deliver them and use their pain for a purpose. I want to talk about that a little bit. Paul and Silas remained focused on the Lord, praising him in the midst of their circumstances. Am I speaking to anybody today? Lord, help us in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our deal. Not minimizing what we're going through, but realize that God doesn't waste anything. He can use that. I want you to hear this real close. God doesn't cause that. But he can use that to work it together for the good. Think about that. Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for the good for those who love him. Okay? Do you love him today? Then you know that he can work it all together for the good. Those circumstances sometimes is tough. Let me read it again. Paul and Silas had faith in the Lord that he would deliver them and use their pain for a purpose. Hold on to that. There's folks that I'm sitting here with today. There's folks I've been ministering to in the past. There's folks that, that, that have ministered to me in the past. And you know what? There has been pain in our lives. Amen? There has been great pain in our life. You may be sitting here today. You may be watching today. Maybe you're watching tomorrow. And say, man, yeah, buddy, you're speaking to me. You know, the Lord is speaking to you. And we understand that there's great pain in our life sometimes. But God can use it for a purpose. He can use it for a greater gain. A lot of times I don't understand it this side of heaven. But I know who is in control. And God can work those things together. I don't like it. It's not comfortable. I don't want to play no more sometime. Am I speaking to anybody? But let me tell you, God can still work it out for the good. That's because we have a good God. Now look at this. What else happens? Their faith was contagious. Nobody else ran off. What about you? If that door was open, I'm thinking, maybe I'd just, I'd been going down the back stretch, rolling on. I'm out. I'm out. I'm free. But something so miraculous happened, they go, oh, what just happened? My chains are broke. My shackles are broke. The walls came tumbling down. The guy that put us in jail is crying. He's talking about your Jesus now. What in the world's happening? I think I might have stuck around for that too. I hope so. Because see, a lot of times we run off and only get half the story and we don't get the full blessing. Come on now. Think about that. We'll run off and not get the whole story and not get the full blessing. So look at that. Contagious. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have earth-shaking faith? Uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? Take it a step at a time. I know folks, our church family, going through very, very tough, tough stuff. And they are inspirations. They inspire us when they're walking through things that they're walking through. And sometimes we just come alongside and love on people. And sometimes we just cry with people. But we always pray for people. But let me tell you, those people that God has put in our life that are going through these tough times, and they do it. In a manner that brings glory to God, praise God for them. And we continue to lift them up. I pray when my time comes, if my time comes, and it probably will come, however it is, because all of us are going to have a tough time, that I mirror Christ well right into the ground, man. That is my desire. But you know what? We have to set the attitude in our hearts already. We have to grow in the grace of the Lord already. We have to know whose we are so we know who we are. And that takes time with God. Look at this. So look at this here. Do you have the faith that can bring the walls of doubt down in your life? Everybody's got a little di uh, doubt in their life, right? Well, but I don't know about my job. But I don't know about this report. I don't know about my son and daughter. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you know God? This is what I, I, I'm preaching to me first, like I say. When there's all these unknowns, you know what? I'm going to tell you who I serve. And that boldness starts coming up. Not anything because of me, because I'm just going, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket with Jesus, let me tell you. Everything, everything, every penny, every purpose, everything, because guess what? When it's all said, that's all you got. But he's more than enough. He's more than enough. And sometimes we don't understand it this side of heaven, and even if things don't turn out the way we want them here, you still win if you know Jesus. Amen. You still win if you know Jesus because he's got a place for you and I and everybody that's called upon the name of Jesus. And we won't have to deal with this stuff no more. The pain, the suffering, the cancer, the money, the this. We had, can come boldly to the throne of grace and we can be there in the presence of our God. Somebody say amen. amen. That's what I'm talking about today. Let's keep on rolling. So look at this. Faith demands action, doesn't it? It does. You can say you have faith. But man, when the rubber hits the road, you got to believe, man. You got to believe. You got to put some action to that faith. Yeah, 
I believe Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. Okay, you can believe all day. Do you know what? The Bible says that, that, that Satan believes that. But have you received that? I always ask, you know, people say, well, how can I pray? Man, pray, pray on the way to church. Pray that this will be a service that transforms some life in some people that are watching, that will transfer the life of our church, that will turn around and bring us closer to that divine encounter with God. It's a personal relationship, man. It's a personal relationship. I don't deal with the God that's way out here. I deal with the God that's in here. That's my Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. And guess what? He's been there ever since I called upon his name. But I'm going to be honest with you, there's been times in my life I put another layer of Buddy Chapman over him and another layer of the world over him. Lord, forgive me. But man, as I spend more time with him, and man, when he pulls that back, and I said, man, I'd rather see you than me any day, God, any day. Lord, help us to focus on him. So our faith demands action. When you step out, man, you've got to grow your faith muscle. It's a personal workout. We've got to be, purpose, be purposeful in growing in the grace of God. Man, we sit on the sidelines so much. I'm not saying just run out there and do it. Oh, I just got to be busy. Be purposeful. I think there's a difference. Be purposeful. Ask the Lord, how will you choose to use me today? When we leave here and we grab something to eat, will, will, will you pray with the waitress? You know? Will you conduct your, your life the rest of the day and the rest, of the rest of the week as that of one who has been with Christ? You know, we go back to what we preached on a while back in Acts 3 when we're talking about when uh, uh, John and, and Peter went to the temple and they spoke the name of Jesus and healed that man that had been uh, lame for 40 years, right? And you know what they said later on when they bring him before the authorities and stuff? Wait a minute. These men have been with Jesus. When we leave here, I hope people say, those folks have been with Jesus. Wow. Isn't that something? How is it that we just turn around and just live a ho-hum life? We can't do it. We need to be shining for the Lord. Amen. Everybody's getting built up in their faith, right? Well, guess what? I found something in my life that this always comes back to. We need a little forgiveness sometime, don't we? How many people love to hear about forgiveness? Let's keep on going. I said, look how forgiveness was displayed in this. Forgiveness showed up with the, when the boatload of faith came in. Look what's happening here. I love this. We take a look at what happens in the heart and everything's flooded their, their, their heart, man, with faith, and things started to change. Forgiveness began to manifest itself in the folks in that story. Has the Lord began to manifest himself in your life so that others see him? How about that? I watch a lot of different things on, when I can, kind of winding down and watching different preaching and everything else. I watched a guy last night, that he's a preacher now, but man, he had a rough life. I don't even remember the guy's name, but I remember his story. And it's like a lot of people's. And it doesn't have to be this bad just to get to this good. He'll take you right where you are and bring you to what's better, okay? And this young guy, he was growing up, never knew his dad. His mom was a prostitute. He, did, he never knew anything about a dad except her pimp. And he got him selling drugs at the time the boy was 12 years old. All this. And he said, man, I can make $3,000 in, in a little bit of time. I'm going to make that money so my mom doesn't have to do that. Now, that's, that's real life. You don't hear much of that talked up in church. That's real life. This is what this guy's going through. Turned around. And starts going on and moving on. And every now and then, he would go stay with his great-grandmother. And he said, my grandmother believed God for everything. For her rent money. For her healing. For everything else. And he said, but when I would get the privilege to go on over there, he said, my grandmother would turn around and lay hands on me. The world was telling me, you're no good. You're a robber. You're this. You're a drug dealer. You're this and everything else. And he just said, well, if that's what I'm getting blamed for and that's what I'm doing, I guess it's true. But she saw what God would do in that young man's life. 13, 14, 15, all these different things going on in his life. And, and just more trouble, more trouble, more trouble. And finally hit the brick wall and he cries out, Jesus, I need you. Let me tell you what. Things started to change. Now, we always want that right now. And it started progression in his life. And he started opening the word of God and started changing things. And so here we go. The very people that, that he was running with, he had to change partners a little bit, right? Got his mom straightened out. Got his life straightened out. God was doing all this from a great-grandmother's prayer. Come on now. From a great-grandmother's prayer. Man, I can't help to think that the good things that are going on in my life are a result of prayers from my great-grandparents and my grandparents. I never saw 
in my life to this day. Witness, I'm sure there's a lot of people. My granddad Chapman was a little wild at one time. But when he got a hold, when the Lord got a hold of him, everything changed. My grandma, you would never know we were related. My grandma, look, look, she looked almost like a full-blooded Indian. Okay? Where I got blonde hair from, I don't know. And my grandma would take her 15 seconds to talk to you. Because she talked so slow, honey. Her name was Melba Jane. But man, my grandma and my granddad. And I didn't get to see them as much as my other grandparents. They lived a bit, pro- but they were some praying folks. I knew, I knew there was a reverence already. Wouldn't come. In. The grandma and them gonna pray. And Lord, if grandma prays, I'm gonna pray because the food's gonna be cold. You know, that's what you're thinking as a kid. Well, my grandmother went home to be with the Lord. My granddad followed probably within a year. And I'm gonna tell you, that guy died of a broken heart. I never see anybody pray so much. It wasn't a job for him. I'd be out shooting a BB gun out of... And my granddad would be sitting there. And he'd be looking at the grandkids. And he'd be rocking in his chair. And he'd just be praying, 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 praying. See, at that time, I'm thinking, man, that old guy, he's just over the top, man. He's just heartbroken. Now I'm thinking, thank you. Thank you, granddad, that you were praying for us. That you were looking past what we were doing and say, Lord, they're, 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 they're my babies. And you know what? I'm standing on a promise. I'm standing on that. Man, what happens if we were praying moms and dads, granddads, great-grandmothers? What will we see in our children? Hey, and look, you say, I've been praying, but I don't see the, the end, end result. Keep praying. Keep praying. I ask my mom all the time, and there's a lot more work to do in my life, and it tickles me. Sometimes it does, but sometimes I was like, really, mom? Did you ever think I'd be a preacher? Lord, no, honey, I didn't. I think she's still thinking it's amazing. She said, think it's amazing. You know what she told me the other day? I love this. And my mom is such a sweet. Just turned 89. Happy birthday, mama. She said, honey, I don't know how you come up with something to preach on every day. I said, mama, I could never exhaust all the greatness of that book. She said, I guess not. There's no way anyone could ever run out of the word of God. I don't care how many times you preach the same sermon. God will bring something else and illuminate something else just like he did today. Every time they were going to church, they had an opportunity. The devil was trying to trip them up, but, you know, the the Lord just turned around and used it as a speed bump. Boom! Jump right over it. Keep on going. Turn it into a ramp. Devil put a speed bump down. God turns it into a ramp. Fly on to the next thing, man. So don't get down. Don't get discouraged and realize that forgiveness is free. And let's keep on going. Look at this. Paul and Silas forgave. Look how they were looking. They could have turned around and said, well, the doors are open. Now we're going to shackle you up, big boy. That's how they've done it in the movies, right? They wouldn't sell many movies like that. They'd turn around and took the, took the guard and put him in the shackles, right? That's not what he did. They responded like Christ. Come on. Look at this. The jailer forgave. Turned around. What else is going on? The biggest thing, Jesus forgave the sin. See, that's where we want to get to. So look at this. Look what forgiveness produced. Freedom. So we walk right on through that, right? I want you guys to see that. It's just amazing. The transformation that what was going on. He turned around and he takes them. It's midnight. Can you imagine at midnight, you bringing these guys in, not smelling good, and you bring them home, your wife is saying, what have you done? How many, how many believe that their wife would have said, what's going on here? Right? I think so. I think so. But guess what? When she heard the message and when the kids heard the message, he and his whole household were saved. See, sometimes you got to open the door of your heart to receive the blessing of God. Let me keep on rolling with that. There's a couple more things I wanted to hit here. I said, man, everything started with the heart change, the forgiveness, man. And over and over and over, forgiveness is an amazing thing. I've said this many a time. I could preach on forgiveness every day. One of the worst people to forgive is the guy or gal in the mirror. So if that's you today, or if it's not you today, it might be you tomorrow or next week. Forgive yourself. God already forgave you. Turn. Repent. Repent means to turn from the world, from the offense, and turn to God. And allow him to wash over you. If it wasn't for that, I would never stand up here. I'm going to tell you that. I would never even walk up here. I am counting on the forgiveness of God to even speak the name of Jesus. But let me tell you what. Not only I count on it, I breathe it. I speak it, I apply it, I share it. That's, that's my lifeline right there. 
Forgiveness, grace, mercy, the love of God. Keep on rolling with that. Look at that, man. I said forgiveness can break the unseen shackles of your past. It can break addiction. It can set you free to be who God has called you to be. Notice something else that happened here. Love and action, compassion, security, given of what they had. You see what they had? Back when we studied a little bit before this, if you go back, it's probably about Acts 15. When they're preaching and different things like this, there was a lady named Lydia. Right? You hear a lady, Lydia, she was well off. She was a lady that dealt in purple. And, and if you look through Bible, Bible times, you realize that that was somebody that could, could dye these different things and make them purple, purple was a big deal. You had to get permission from the government to do this, right? To, to set up. I didn't even realize that. That was a big deal. She had some money. She had some cash. She had some influence, right? But she was in the world. But when she heard the message and got in the word, boom, come on in. What, if I got it, you got it. My dad used to tell me all the time, son, before you buy something, make sure that I don't have it. Because if I got it, you got it. And I tell my friends that all the time. I tell it all the time. I got it from my dad. I say, if I got it, you got it. It's just stuff. If I got something that, you can, that can help you, I hope you, I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you take care of it. But ultimately, I'm going to give it in good faith so that you can use it. You know? Isn't that what love does? Isn't that what we see throughout the Bible? Isn't that what that man did, washing their wounds, everything else? There's a lot of times in life we say, oh, I could never do that. Guess what? There's a lot of things you will do. There's a lot of things you can do. And after you get your head out of it and get your heart into it, you say, that won't have bad after all. It's a bigger picture because there's a bigger God that we serve. Amen? Everybody doing good? So let's bring it on home. Everybody hanging in, right? So we're looking at this here. I said, when the, when the, no, I promise you to get back to 35, right? When it was daylight, the magistrate sent the, officers, sent the officers to the jailer with the order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can go in peace, all right? Let's keep on rolling. I'm going to read through and then we'll, we'll, we'll pull it all together. But look what Paul says. He gets a little boldness. Paul says to the officer, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we're Roman citizens, and they threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? What does he say after that? No. <laughs> Let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrate. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escort them from the, the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house. Remember, we talked about Lydia. Where they met with other believers, brothers and sisters, and encouraged them. Uh, then they left. Look at this now. The magistrate, that was a big deal. They knew something big was going on. But when they found out what was going on, they found out. See, let me tell you, those times, if, if they went outside the law, they could have been tortured. The whole town could have got strung up when the, all the, the higher authorities come in. You did what to a Roman citizen? You didn't even ask? You didn't even check? Why didn't Paul say, I'm a Roman citizen? As we study through our Bible study and different things pulled out, maybe it was because of this. He didn't want them to hear the message because of what he was, but who he was. See, now he's got the platform of Christ. He wasn't preaching on the platform of a Roman citizen, something so much more. The platform of Jesus Christ. The earthquake, all those things. They couldn't deny it. And guess what? He had them over a barrel now, right? Because you know what would have probably happened? Oh, well, you know what? As soon as these guys get out of town, we're going to fix that jailer, man. We're going to take that jailer. What do you think you're doing? Maybe he says, and by the way, uh, all those new believers, I still got your phone number. I'll call, them. I'll call them on you, right? Maybe he just did that. Maybe God worked that all out to secure them to grow even deeper. Look at that, man. He had a platform of God, not a platform of the Roman citizenship. Look at this, man. I said the higher authorities, man, they knew they'd been wrong. They knew they blew it. And man, Paul said, man, what, what, what's going on here? He continues to bring this on down. And so we see the whole story when it comes down through this. God is so much God. Now I'm thinking in the middle of that beating, they weren't seeing the other side. How about y'all? I'm thinking when they're swinging in the prison and their joints are out of socket, they might not see the finished work of this. But God's whispering, take another step. It's going to be all right. You might not see how you're going to come out the other side of what you're dealing with right now. But God's still saying, hey, I'm faithful. I'm going to work it together. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use that pain for a purpose. I'm going to use that for my glory. Look who gets the glory on all this right here. God gets the glory. Amen? So we keep on rolling with all these things. And I say, man, God, you're just so much God. I said, you bring us through our fears. You grow us in our faith. You forgive our sin. And you give us a platform of Christ to stand firm on. So friends, let me tell you, isn't this pretty amazing? Who would have thought that that story would have turned out so good for God? Anybody? See, if you just kind of casually read through that and said, man, what I you know, I've read it before. I was like, man, that was an earthquake. That was cool. God moved on that and the guy got saved. That's good. But it's so much more. I want to encourage you this week as you're studying the Word of God and you, you come to Bible study and you take time to dig into the Word of God. Ask God. Pray over that. Lord, show me what you're we're going to teach me. Give me a deeper revelation of what's going on in here because I want to get closer to you. It says the Philippian jailer was converted. All right? I asked a guy the other day. Spent some time with a good friend of mine. Got a lot going on. I said, do you remember when you gave your life to the Lord? He said, I remember going through the motions. He said, but then I remember the day that I gave my life to the Lord. Wow. Just being honest, just being real. I remember going through the motions, but then it was that day, the conversion day. The day that he says, hey, I need you, Jesus. Is that your day today? Have you just been going through the motions? Have you just said, yeah, well, you know, that, that's a nice story. That's good. That was back then. No, let me tell you. God's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to walk in the greatness of God? The, let me tell you something. I'm not up here telling you everything's going to be perfect in your life like the guys on TV and everything's going to be great and money's going to fall out the sky. You got a big old golden pinata or something. I'm telling you, this boy is better than that. You got Jesus. Put that on a scale. Boom. God wins. He trumps everything. You think about time. God is not bound by time. And let me tell you, the time that we got here, whether we live 80 years, 120 years, is going to be, whoop, it's going to be a blip. And matter of fact, I'll just put a little plug in. We're going to be talking about that tonight as we go to Shoreline at 7 p.m. You guys come on out and check it out because we've got a whole different message there. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's always the same message. It's Jesus to be glorified. But we're going to come in at an other angle because we're taking a net and we're swooping it big because we want all the fish to come in. We want all the folks to know Jesus. How about you? And so I pray today as we walk through this thing here that you know what? You don't have to fear when you know God. Have faith in God and receive the forgiveness of God for your sin, for your mistakes, for your idle words, for your, for your craziness, all those different things. I got one other thing to say. God will forgive you, but people don't always forget as fast. I was at Mr. Bobby's uh, party yesterday, and I heard this guy talking. I said, that guy sounds familiar. And I heard this guy talking. I said, that sounds like Carl. Carl was my neighbor years and years ago. I said, he ain't going to remember me. Oh, he remembered me. I said, Carl, what's up? How you doing? Put that grip on me, 82 years old, I believe. He said, man, I said, man, you got it, don't you? He said, I remember exactly who you are. I said, that's been about 30 years ago and 30 pounds. He said, yeah, and you were a mess back then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Want another piece of cake? <laughs> but he told the truth. And, uh, and, and I know Denise is going, oh my gosh, what, what did I get into? God changed my life. My neighbor, for 30 years, he goes, you were a mess. How about that? <laughs> I get tickled about that because there's still be a work in my life. But guess what? They see a change now. They see a change. And I hope you see a change tomorrow in the right direction. And a change tomorrow. I say that because of the grace of God. Not because of any of Buddy Chapman stuff. It's because of the grace of God. That's why I get excited, man. How about you guys? If it's counting on me, we're going down. But we're counting on the Lord. And he's lifting us up. Let us pray. Woo! Amen. Lord, I praise your name. I love you, Jesus. And I thank you for each one here. And I pray, Lord, today, if somebody's listening online, if somebody's sitting in here, that you take this message and just put it in their heart that you know what? They don't need to fear. You know all anyway. Lord, that we don't need to worry. That you break every chain. You break the shackles, Lord, just like you did 2,000 years ago. You can do it today. And we thank you, Lord, for that. So if you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to tell you right now that we love you. 
And I want to tell you right now that God loves you and that God is faithful. So friends, let me tell you, if you're sitting there today and you say, what must I do to be saved? I'm going to tell you. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what it's all about. It's not about your past. It's not about anything else other than you coming to the terms and knowing that our sin separates us from God. Might as well come to the terms. It's the truth. The Bible says all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. So if you're sitting here today, if you're in here today, maybe it's your first time, maybe you've been here a hundred times, and you say, man, that's pulling on my heart. I just can't get this off my mind. Well, you know what? That's the Holy Spirit pulling you closer to him because he loves you and he wants you and he, and he just desires for you to have the life that he bought and paid for. All we got to do is receive it. You say, well, that, I, 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 I want to receive it. Well, let me tell you what the deal is. Just pray from your heart. Dear Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you're the son of God, Lord. Today I'm trusting you to be my savior. And when we do that by faith, let me tell you, God says, you are mine. You are sealed. Jesus holds us, right? We walk it out. We learn more about him. We, we want to, to, to live a life that references him uh, very well. But sometimes we'll still fall. But be sure that we were quick to repent and come back to him. God has got it. And God loves you. And God shows you that through the finished work of the cross. And I pray today that that was your prayer. And if that was your prayer today, know that God is faithful in answering his word and his promises. Don't leave here today without saying, you know what? Pastor Buddy, I prayed that prayer. You know what we're going to do? We're going to say amen. We're going to come alongside and say thank you, Lord, for working in the hearts of our brothers and sisters. If you're online, you say, I prayed that prayer today. You know what? It's about not just the prayer. It's the faith in the prayer. It's the faith in the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. Believing that, receiving that. So if that's you today, I say welcome to the family and praise the Lord. And everybody said amen friends if you're watching uh this today i pray that this message finds you well i pray that it is a message that transforms your heart and i pray that today you receive the greatest gift of all the lord jesus christ have a great day share the message we love you everybody said